This is Denise Allen with Your Pennsylvania Ancestors. And in this episode, we're continuing on with our journey with John Curry to see if I can trace where his family came from in Ireland and when they got to Pennsylvania. Can I find John Curry in the 1920, the 1910, and the 1900 census? And what challenges am I gonna run into? I don't know, it's genealogy. I'm sure there'll be a bunch. Let's see which ones we have with this. And hopefully my mistakes, my learnings will help you in your research of your Pennsylvania ancestors. Now I'm going to look for John Curry in the United States Census. Now, what Ancestry is always going to do, and I think every website does, find my past, family search, they're going to start to try to give you hints here to save you some time. So there's this John Robert Curry in this tree, and it's got some information here. It's got the William I. Curry. It's got Mary Toner. It's got the death here, but it has it in Philadelphia, not in Plymouth Meeting, Montgomery County. So I could use this, but I want to ignore that right now. And I just want to use the actual records. Let's try to find him first in the 1920 census. So here's our 1920 John Currys. Now I'm going to scroll because I told you this name was common. And you're probably like, no, it can't be that common. Well, here we are. We're scrolling. And the number of John Currys, according to this, there's 35,000 Currys. Now, if you're an experienced Ancestry user, you know as you start scrolling through the pages, uh, you get more and more variations of the name. So that's not very helpful. But we're going to go up here. We know he was living in Plymouth uh, Township, Montgomery County. So let's go by that location, no matter what the name is. And I find this one right here. It says 1920 Plymouth, which is the township. Then the Montgomery, which is the county, and then the state, and obviously the country. Let's click on this one, and we see two corrections here. That's what these brackets are. It says John Curry, and then another name in here says John Carey. So 1920, it says age about 30, birth year 1890, Plymouth, Montgomery County, Gallagher Road. That matches the death certificate. He was married in 1920. Anna was his wife's name. Uh, we got crane operator, brick plant, that sort of matches. We know he was at a, a factory. So let's scroll down, and we have a lot, of, a lot of children here. We have William for the firstborn son, very promising, matches the father's name. We have Helen, Margaret, and then we have two borders here, which is really interesting. But I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking it matches on a lot of the things that I know from the death certificate. So... I'm going to go ahead and view the actual document. What I love is this highlighting of where it is on the form so you don't have to read through the whole thing. And we have John. And this does look like Carrie, doesn't it? We'll, we'll zoom in, scroll over. But look at this. Look at this handwriting. It really is something. You totally get how somebody transcribing this would have put C-A-R-E-Y, right? But it also looks like, if you know Curry, C-U-R, maybe that's an R and a Y. But here we have the Gallagher Road along the side here. Doesn't look like there was an actual house number, unfortunately. But we do know the dwelling and the visitation here for the census taker. All right, so here's our John, here's our Anna the wife. Here's the indication they were married, the ages, the 30. They rented their home, which would make sense if they worked for the Lavino company on Lavino Road. This was probably one of those situations where they rented from the actual company itself. It was a company town or a company street. Birthplace of father, Pennsylvania, mother, Pennsylvania. Those match what we know on the death certificate. Employee type, it looks like an S for salary. Interesting. The two boarders also work at the brick plant. And so now I, I have this extra detail that Lavino Company made bricks. So that 
is another detail that I didn't know. It'll help me figure out more about that company as I do further research into uh, John Curry's life. But I think this is a match for for my guy. So I'm going to go ahead and save this to the John Curry family tree. Now I'm going to look for John in the 1910 census. If he was 30 in 1920, he should be 20 in 1910. <laughs> That's not too confusing. I'm going to click search again up here. And I know he was living in the center of the state, or at least I was told he was from Clinton County. So let me see if I have any Clinton County curries. We got a bunch of John Curry's in Philadelphia. Holy Toledo. If you were not being particular, it would be so easy to get confused. We have a couple in Pits Pittsburgh. They threw in a New York in here. Wow. This starts to get confusing, doesn't it? Quite quickly. So let me check on this first one. Even though the name doesn't match, it's Curry, not Curry. Let's see. The little pop-up gives me the name Anna. The spouse matches. Here he's working a steam shovel. In the previous census, he was working a crane. And those are sort of similar. I think we have here a child too. Let's just look. We have a William here as just born. Now there was a William who was 11 in 1920. So that would match here. So I'm thinking this is my guy, even though this is Center County and it's not Clinton, it's it's right next door. And he was buried in Belfont, which is Center County. It's certainly more likely this is him than a Philadelphia record for John. So let me just double check and look on the actual document to see if there's any more details. Again, no house number. This is a pretty rural area, Patton Township. Parents born in Pennsylvania matches again. And not out of work, can read and write, renting the house. And I really think this is my guy. And now I know William was born, it says 11 out of 12 months. So he was born 11 months ago from the date of the census. And the date of the census is at the top when it was actually conducted because it varied every single time they did it. And this one's uh, the 21st of April. So William was born in May of 1909. That's what it tells me. Maybe June. But that's, that's pretty accurate. So that's going to help in some future research. So I'm going to make sure to put that in my research notes. So if we're going to look for John in the 1900 census, he's going to be about 10 years old and should be living with his parents, William and Mary Curry. Let's see what we find. First one up is a John R. Curry at 10 years old with a William and a Mary. Let's just do a little scrolling. Oh, can you believe it? Right next door in Blair County is another John Curry. <gasps> and his father's name is William too. No way. How is this possible? The mother's name is Sarah. So, and this mother, Sarah, was born in Maryland. So not likely our John Curry. But look how close together they are. <laughs> oh, this is what makes genealogy such an adventure. Now we have our Philadelphia John Currys. We have a car in, out by Pittsburgh and Allegheny. Wait, here's another John Curry. This is John C. Curry in Center County. He's a lodger, age 14. Wow, lives with a William and a Lizzie Curry. Interesting. I hope you, you're seeing that I'm using the particulars I know about John so far, his age, his parents' name, his location, to narrow down which John Curry in the census it is. So the John Curry here, John R. Curry, the middle initial gives me a clue that there's other John Currys living in this community, is the only son of William and Mary. Oh, so this... This boy was sandwiched between all these girls. 
So we have Lizzie, Lily, Laura, and Liddy. How adorable is that? Oh my goodness. So let's view our document. Just scroll in. Look at all these people. Pennsylvania, 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 Pennsylvania. Oh, wait, we have an Ireland in here. Oh, and it's my Mary who was born in Ireland. No way. All right, so I'm skipping ahead here. So let's read left to right. No house number again. We have William Curry. Oh, the handwriting here looks pretty good. Must be why it's uh, transcribed so nicely. William Curry, Mary Curry, Lizzie, John, Lily, Laura, Liddy. The 1900 census is so great because we get birth months and years and then the age too. We have them married for 16 years. She had seven children, five living. And there's five here. So that's good. That matches. So Mary's parents were born in Ireland. So she's a first generation uh, American. Well, that is exciting. So I already have one person to try to jump back over the pond with. Let's see, we got manager of a creamery for William, months not employed, zero, hardworking man there. We have attended school two, attended school seven for John. So I'm going to need to look up what those mean, if that means years or the last months. And I'll do a little clip and put it in the membership section for this of where you find the census directions because that would be good they rented and it was a house it was not a farm so very cool very very cool i'm gonna go with this is him this is my john living in this household with four sisters so what did we figure out in this census search we figured out that John Curry had children. That was not mentioned in the newspaper article. We also know that he had siblings. He wasn't an only child. We found him in three censuses. And if there was an 1890 census, we could have hopefully found him at one year old, right? Because he was born in 1889. And, oh... That missing census always gets us, doesn't it, as genealogists? We found out that there were lots of spelling variations on the last name Curry. And I showed you how I reasoned through those. You also saw that there were lots of John Currys. So I didn't even scroll through all the options. But I am going to do a video on how to figure out how many people of a similar name live in an area. Because I think it's important to try to keep that in mind when you're doing your research. In my Inner Circle member section, Buy me a coffee, or you can find the link on paancestors.com uh, backslash members. You'll find links to my results of searches on my heritage, family search, and find my past. So those are the other major genealogy websites. And did I find or have similar problems in researching John Curry in the census? You can find out in my members section. I won't ruin the surprise. There's also transcriptions to the episodes if you would like to just read uh, the information I'm presenting. So check out the Inner Circle membership if you'd like to get those links. You can also on there ask me any questions and interact with other listeners of the podcast and share tips and advice. And here's a shout out to the Inner Circle members that have just joined up. We have Bill Kirshner, Kathy Kelly, and Terry Narotsky. Welcome! Now, in the next episode, uh, in our continuing journey with John Curry and finding out his origin story here, we are going to get the marriage record for John and Anna. I'll also do some searching of John's children and just complete that part of the family tree. So this is going to be like one of those quick video montages. I won't walk you through every single detail of how I do that. But when um, researching someone, I just want to go through and make sure I get all the details down and I'm not just moving in that straight line back. This is Denise Salen with paancestors.com and I hope this research for John Curry 
helps you discover your Pennsylvania ancestors. Mm -hmm.